Hello grade threes and fours and we're going to finish our uh, scripture memory work for this term 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 9 in this video and we're also going to revise our catechism questions questions 1 to 5 so it's really more repetition and not that much hard work um, but just really putting the finishing touches to our Bible memory work for this term so let's get started read this with me if you can recite it fantastic otherwise read it with me it's also just good practice to read um, aloud so let's go blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ according to his great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation. Right, so we're going to go through our um, the animation again from uh, verse by verse. And the whole idea here is that you try and say it before the words appear on the screen and I'll read them when they do. So, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his mercy, he has caused us to be born again. Let's check. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. From the dead. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's grace, or by God's power, are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time, in the last time. Okay, so do you see that? I was reciting ahead of it, um, and then the words were appearing on the screen, or the letters falling into place, just to confirm um, how I was doing, and I'm sure it did for you as well, and you see that I was able to correct two little errors that I made, and I'm hoping that you can do the same. Uh, should we do that again? I'd like us to actually repeat that, because um, I'm testing myself as well. So let's go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. How did you do? I did okay. Let's carry on. Um, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven, there we go, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. There we go. I did better. No errors this time. How did you do? Right, let's move on to the next couple of verses. And remember in the last video I spoke a little bit about what the verses mean, so I'm sure you're okay with that, and I'll do that when I get to the last verses this time. Last two verses. Right, so, okay, we've done that. We were just testing ourselves. Um, fast forward. Right, verses 6 to 7. So remember there, we've got that. Um, we are kept in heaven for you, uh, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour 
at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's see how we do with that. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though refined by fire, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor um, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so how did you do with that one? I think I made one little error there. Okay. How do you feel about that? Should we try it again? Okay, I'm rewinding. <laughs> Let's go. Let's see. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if it is nece if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, though tested by fire, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. How did you do? I still made the one error. Okay. Should we do it one more time? Okay. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little time, while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold, that perishes, though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, last two verses. Some of you have um, memorized the whole passage, but if you haven't and you're just waiting for the last two verses, I hope this video will be an encouragement for you to finish well. So, let's read it together. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Who's the him that Peter's speaking about? It's Jesus. And what Peter is saying is that for those of us on earth who are alive, you know, after Jesus um, walked on this earth, taught, um, performed his miracles, did his works, and then died on the cross, rose again from the dead, and ascended to heaven, we are living in a time where we have not seen him. And many of the Christians that Peter was writing to in the early church had not seen Jesus. They had not seen him, maybe just geographically, they weren't in the same place as him when he was still on earth, or they become Christians after Jesus was crucified. Um, so Peter is saying to them, you have not, though you have not seen him, you love him and um, though you do not now see him you believe in him and that is for us alive today um, we have not seen Jesus and we do not now see him but if you know Jesus if you have a relationship with Jesus if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior then you know him and he's as real to you as someone that you can see and touch standing right for you and so Peter can say with such assurance, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him. And, you know, children, this is, ask your moms and dads, and it will be true for them. This is true for me. It's true for Uncle Grant. We can say with our whole hearts that though we have never seen Jesus, we love him. And though we ha um, do not see him in front of us right now, we believe in him. We trust in him. And um, and because of that, we rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Um, how can you rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory? Well, um, you know, have you ever had the feeling when you are so excited about something or you are so overjoyed about something and all you can do is squeal with excitement or just walk around with a big silly grin on your face. Have you ever felt that happy before? Well, that's um, rejoicing with joy that is inexpressible. You cannot actually express with words how 
deeply happy you are. And Peter says that this is what happens for Christians, that um, we can, knowing Jesus and loving him, we rejoice with a joy that we cannot actually fully express. We cannot sit down and write it down and give words to it. Um, it is filled with glory. Um, it is filled with um, such wonder and such rejoicing in God. Why? Because through Jesus, we are obtaining, that means receiving or, or getting to, the outcome of our faith, which is the salvation of our souls. What is the end point to which our faith um, is, is, is pointing, is working towards? What is the final end of our faith in Jesus? Well, it is the salvation of our souls. It is the full, final gift of salvation. Uh, trusting Jesus now, we are saved. Um, the moment you place your trust in Jesus, you are saved. You are, you are born again of his spirit. You belong to him. You are joined to him. Uh, you are his and he is yours. But until we see him face to face, our salvation um, isn't a gift that we've fully received yet. And it is only finally when we receive the outcome of our faith, the salvation of our souls, that will happen when we see Jesus on the last day, on Judgment Day, when he comes back. And so, and, and when he brings in the new heaven and the new earth. So, yeah, that's quite an amazing thing to think about. We are saved the moment we are, trust Jesus and are born again by his Spirit, but our salvation is a gift that we fully receive only when we see him face to face. And this is the end point of the whole of a Christian's life, is seeing Jesus face to face. So, let's see if we can memorize that together. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him. And rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Obtaining, that means receiving, the outcome of your faith, which is the salvation of your souls. Should we try that again? Let's see how we go. Alright. Though you do not see him though you, sorry let's go though you have not seen him you love him though you do not now see him you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory why you are obtaining the outcome of your faith the salvation of your soul Right, so there, children, um, that's our 1 Peter passage done for the term. And my prayer is that these words, because you've memorized them, that the Lord um, will impress them on your heart and that you will find this word that is planted as a seed in your heart will grow and grow in your life and will become more and more precious to you and will be solid food um, that will help you to grow, that will um, give you a handle to hold on to when things get tough. Okay, right, let's move on to our catechism questions. So, what is our only hope in life and in death? That we are not our own, but, body and, um, but belong body and soul, both in life and death, to God to God and our Saviour Jesus Christ. Shall we try that again? What is our only hope in life and in death? That we are not our own, but belong, body and soul, both in life and death, to God and to our Saviour Jesus Christ. Right, now we get to who is God. God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. He is eternal, infinite, and changeable in his power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, justice, and truth. Nothing happens except through him and by his will. How did you do with that one? Okay, 
Do you want to do it again once more? Let's try it once more. So, who is God? God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. He is eternal, infinite, and unchangeable. Just think of those things. Eternal, infinite, and unchangeable. In his power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, justice, and truth. Nothing happens except through him and by his will. Children, this is such a comfort to know, especially in a time like COVID-19 um, and lockdown and all the upheaval to the whole world's life in 2020. Um, God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. Nothing happens except through him and by his will. It is a comfort to know this. Like, the world hasn't just suddenly gone crazy and, you know, um, Satan's in charge. No, God is in charge. Nothing happens except through him and by his will. And um, the fact that he is eternal, infinite and unchangeable in his power and perfection means that there will never ever be a time, not now or ever, where he is not powerful, um, where he is not complete, his perfection, where he is not a completely and utterly God. Um, and it would be um, what's very comforting about the fact that his power and perfection are eternal and infinite and unchangeable um, is the fact that he's not just an all-powerful and an all-perfect God. That would be scary if he was a bad God and uh, a God who lied and a God who wasn't just. Imagine having an all-powerful and um, all-perfect God who was that way for eternity, but he wasn't loving or kind. That would be awful. So what good news that he is eternal, infinite and unchangeable in his power and perfection, but also and along with that, in his goodness and glory, in his justice and his wisdom and his truth. Truly that is something to praise the Lord for, that we have that kind of God. He is the God who has made our universe and who sustains it and nothing happens by his will. So whatever happens will end up for a good reason for those who love him. How many persons are there in God? There are three persons in the one true and living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same in substance, equal in power and glory. It's important to remember this. But here we go. Let's try and say it together. There are three persons in the one true and living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same in substance, equal in power and glory. Should we try that one more time? Okay. There are three persons in the one true and living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same in substance, equal in power and glory. There are three persons in the one true and living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same in substance and equal in power and glory. Great. Question four. How and why did God create us? God created us male and female in his own image. To know him, love him, live with him and glorify him. And it is right that we who were created by God should live to his glory. Should we say that again? How and why did God create us? God created us male and female in his image. To know him love him, live with him, and glorify him. And it is right that we who were created by God should live to his glory. And oh, he has to test us again. God created us, male and female, in his own image, to know him, love him, live with him, and glorify him. And it is right that we who were created by God should live to his glory. Right, so question five, what else did God create? God created all things and by his, by his powerful word and all his creation was 
bearing good. Everything flourished under his loving rule. Should we try that one more time? What else did God create? God created all things by his powerful word and all his creation was very good. Everything flourished under his loving rule and continues to flourish today. Well done, children. We've reached the end of our second term of memory, um, our memory work and our catechism.